Thank you for joining us on ECMID Television once again, where I'm delighted to bring you yet another of the presenters that will be on stage live during ECMID 2017 in Vienna. This particular episode is focused on Professor Gilbert Grub, who is the current director of the Institute of Microbiology at the University Hospital of Lausanne in Switzerland. He's also the chef de service and head of medical microbiology at that same university hospital, and mainly his activities center on research, teaching, diagnostics as a microbiologist, as well as patient care, because of course he's a world-renowned infectious diseases expert. Professor, a pleasure to have you with us on ECMID TV once again. Hello. Yeah. You're, you're no stranger to ECMID, sir, at all, are you? No, no, um, of course, I, I was already uh, at the ECMID. Uh, I started my first activity in 1997. So it's uh, since a long time I'm present at uh, ECMID. That's amazing. 20 years of ECMID, and we're only going into ECMID the 27th incantation. So you really are um, an absolute expert and almost a member of the furniture at ECMID. Could I say that? Well, uh, I, I like ECMID because it's a, a lot of opportunity for exchange, for meeting people. So I, I really like ECMID, yeah. Are you amazed to see how much it's grown over those two decades that you've been involved, Professor? Yeah, in, in 1997, there was about 2,000, 2,500 people. And now we are more than 10,000. So it's more than uh, four times uh, the number of participants. And also, it's not only the growing number, but the the topics have slightly changed. You have a lot of new technologies that are around. So it's just absolutely fascinating to be part of ECMID every year. I think one of the things that people tell me um, at ECMID, and I've been to two of them now, unlike the 20, sir, that you've attended, um, but people tell me that what's important is what's on the main stage, but equally as important is the networking amongst delegates, amongst the presenters. You know, this community around clinical microbiology and infectious diseases is a true global community. And ECMID seems to be the place where the globe comes to meet. Yes, of course, it's always a good opportunity to meet uh, friends, to meet colleagues, to make new networking for future uh, collaborations, to improve some ongoing collaborations, and of course, uh, to share ideas and just to have new ideas. So it's uh, an excellent opportunity for us. Yeah. And of course, to listen to world-renowned experts such as yourself, sir, as well. So what will you be presenting at this forthcoming ECMID in Vienna? So I, I was asked to give a keynote lecture on a new innovative diagnostic test, a new diagnostic approach. And uh, so practically, there is a lot of new approach that we can discuss about. In our institute, we mainly focused during last year to improve the diagnosis of bloodstream infections yes. by improving the tool in order to uh, earlier recognize the presence of uh, bacteria that circulate in the bloodstream and also by being able quickly to identify what is the cause of the sepsis and what is its antibiotic susceptibility. If you know the antibiotics uh, to which a bacteria is susceptible, then you know how to treat the patient. And this is really important in terms of outcomes and benefits from, for patient care. Are you focusing more in your presentation, sir, on statistics or your own expertise based on what you're doing inside the University Hospital at Lausanne? So practically, I will make a summary of what is new, what has been developed uh, all over the world. I will mainly do a review because there is a lot of new technologies going on worldwide. And I will take as one of the examples the diagnostic of bloodstream infection, but I will also tackle other new innovative techniques applied to other diagnostic approaches. Uh, practically, we have some experience in Lausanne, so I will, of course, also provide some new uh, data from Lausanne and new insight on what we have developed recently. And for instance, one of the recent work we have done was to try to better uh, uh, know the antibiotic subsidy of a bacteria. And this, of course, there are many ways to do it. You could just say that you use the old 
phenotypic approach such as Vitec or Phoenix, and just speed the process by starting directly from a blood culture pellet, a bacterial pellet. But you could also make really new innovation. And with a, a physician from Lausanne, uh, we started to work on the use of atomic force microscopy to see if a bacteria is living. And using this, you can uh, put uh, the bacteria that you just isolated from the blood of the patient in contact with antibiotics. And you can see in 10, 20 minutes whether the bacteria is still alive meaning it is a resistant bacteria, or if it is killed by the antibiotics, meaning that the bacteria is susceptible. And this way, you can really shorten down to 20 minutes the time to result of antibiotic susceptibility or a blood culture bacterial pellet. That's amazing. So this is nice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's astounding, sir. And, you know, I, I hear that underlying theme of technology being mentioned a lot. You know, is technology finally helping us move into new directions in your world, in your arena? Of course, the technology not only allows us to move forward with increased susceptibility, we have a better sensitivity and we have a better fiability, but also we have a short-term time to results and we have also the possibility to save some time in terms of uh, uh, technician time because you can also move forward towards automation and all together this provides better results shorter time to results more information with lower cost now in terms of both research and all the way through to treatment as well um, with diagnostics firmly there in the middle advances this year are helping all of those fields of, of, of development aren't they Yes, of course. Uh, uh, the, the basic research is really important because this allows us to understand how a bacteria is uh, developing, what are the really important aspects. But of course, behind the basic research that helps us to have new tools, we need also then to consider how to implement that in the lab, in the real life, in order to have a benefit for uh, patients. Fantastic, sir. Um, the, the key significant remark that you're going to be making in your presentation, what do you want the audience to most take note of? I think one, one of the lessons we can uh, gather from all what is new is that without research, you cannot have new technologies, new innovation, but without a clinical uh, implementation, this uh, innovation will be uh, remain sterile and will not be useful for patients. So we need really to combine the skills of basic research with the clinicians use and clinical implementation. And it's really important always to be able to interpret the results obtained with new technologies and to, to be able to make this implementation. Brilliant, sir. We're so looking forward to your keynote. It's going to be amazing. I have a feeling it's going to be standing room only in the venue. Okay, but okay. we hope. <laughs> we most certainly hope so. I'm so looking forward to seeing you live once again at ECMID, sir. Thank you for giving up some of your time for us today. Um, we all uh, wish you safe travels. Can't wait to see you again and um, hear what, exactly what it is that you have to present to us. Thank you, Professor, for being with us today. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.